Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world. This is a Cube Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to this special Cube virtual coverage of the AWS Summit virtual online. This is an event that Amazon normally has in person in San Francisco, but now it's virtual around the world, Seoul, Korea, in Tokyo, all over the world, in Asia Pacific and in North America. I'm John Furrier here joined with Stu Miniman. Who, Stu, uh, we're kicking off AWS virtual with the Cube virtual. I'm in Palo Alto with the quarantine crew. You're in Massachusetts and Boston with the quarantine crew there. Stu, great to have you on to talk about AWS virtual summit. Yeah, John, it's uh, it, it's great to see you. Uh, it's been uh, you know interesting times doing all these remote interviews. Uh, as many of us say, you know, I, I sure don't miss playing in the hotels, but I do miss the communities. I do miss the hallway conversation. Uh, but great to see you, John. Love the you know Midnight Madness shirt from uh, reInvent last year. Well, we want to thank Amazon for stepping up with some sponsorship for allow us to do the virtual cube alongside their virtual event because now it's a global community. It's all virtual. There are no boundaries. The cube has no boundaries. Stu, we got a great program. We have Corey Quinn coming up. We expect to hear from him. Last week in AWS, he's known for, he's a rising star in the community, certainly Cube uh, guest and also guest host and analyst for the Cube. We expect to hear all the latest from his big Zoom post controversy to really what's going on in AWS around what services are hot. I know you're going to do a great interview with him, but let's talk about Amazon. Um, we're seeing a ton of activity. Um, obviously most recently, uh, last week was the Jedi thing, which was an agency protest kind of confidential. Microsoft blew that up big time with a post by their worldwide comms person, Frank Shaw, countered by Drew Herdner, who's the comms global lead for AWS. And so a war of words is ensuing. This is again pointing to the cloud native war that's going on with a Jedi conference, I mean, Jedi contract for $10 billion, which is awarded to Microsoft. This shows that the heat is on, Stu. This is a absolute bloodbath between AWS and Microsoft. We're seeing it play out now virtually with Amazon, AI, large scale cloud. This is huge. This is this is another level, a DEF CON one, basically. Your thoughts? Yeah, John, uh, you know, you, you've covered this uh, really well. It's been really interesting to watch. You know, number one, you talk about, you know, the security requirement. Uh, when AWS launched the GovCloud, had the CIA as, as a client uh, early on many years ago, it was the green light for many companies to go from Wait, is the cloud secure enough to, well, it's good enough for the federal government in the US, it's probably good enough for the enterprise. Uh, when Microsoft won Jedi, they didn't have all the certification uh, to meet what was in the contract. They had a ticking clock to make sure that they could meet uh, the, those security engagements, uh, as well as you know, what, one of the pieces that, on the dashboard uh, that moved was Oracle made a partnership announcement with Azure. Uh, we know the federal government uses Oracle quite a bit, so they can now run that in Azure and not have the penalties from Oracle. So, you know, that many have said, you know, hey, AWS, why don't you kind of let that one piece of business go? You do a lot of federal business, but those ripple effects we understand from one contract kind of moves things around. Well, my take on this is just the tip is in the teapot. Either Microsoft's got something that we don't know or they're running scared. My prediction, Stu, is that the clock is going to tick out, DOD is going to award the contract again to Microsoft because I don't think the DOD wants to change based upon the data that I'm getting from my reporting and that ultimately Amazon will keep this going in court because Microsoft has been deficient on winning the deal. And that is by the judge and in government contracts, as you know, when you're deficient, you're ineligible. So essentially on the tech specs, Microsoft failed to meet the criteria of the contract and they're deficient. They still can't host top secret content even if they wanted to. This is going to be a game changer. When, if this comes out to be true, it'll be a huge tech scandal. If it's true, then AWS is going to have egg on their face. Okay, so moving oh. past Jedi, this speaks to the large scale problems that are having with COVID. You're seeing Amazon, they're all working at home, but they still got to run the servers. They can do it, they got cloud native, they got DevOps. But for their customers, Stu, the people who are trying to do hybrid, what are you hearing in terms of the kinds of situations that people are doing? Are they still going to work with masks on? Are there still data centers that need to be managed? What are you hearing in the tech world, Stu, around COVID-19? And as the cloud becomes more apparent, it's obvious that if you're not cloud native, you're going to be on the wrong side of history here. This is pretty obvious. Yeah, well, absolutely, John. Uh, there, there is a bit of a you know tailwind uh, behind cloud uh, with COVID-19. Everything from 
you, you mentioned work from home. Everybody needs to be on their VPN. They need to access their service, access their services where they are. If you've got a global workforce, uh, if you thought that your infrastructure was going to be able to handle that, uh, you know, you, you might not be in for a good story. AWS yeah. is meeting that need. Uh, there's been some of the cloud providers that have had performance issues, have had to prioritize which customers can get access to things. Uh, AWS is standing strong. They're meeting their customers uh, and the, the, they're answering the call of, of cloud. Uh, you know, we know that AWS, you know, puts a huge investment into uh, their environment, if you compare an availability zone for, from AWS, uh, you know, it is very, very sturdy. It's it not just, you know, a, a, you know, a small cluster uh, and they say, hey, we can run all over the place. You know, to, to be specific, it's, you know, John Azure uh, has been having some of those performance issues uh, and has been some concerns. Uh, Corey actually wrote a really good article uh, talking about that it actually puts a bad you on public cloud in general, but we know not all public clouds are the same. So, yeah. uh, you know, Google has been doing quite well, uh, you know, managing uh, the, the the demand spike. So has AWS. Uh, Microsoft uh, has needed to respond a little bit. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Microsoft's outages. Microsoft actually got caught on their 10, their 8K filing, which I just had to be going through, and they noticed that they said they had all this uptime for um, the cloud. Turns out it wasn't the cloud, it was the team's product. They had to actually put a strike a line through it legally. So you know, a lot of people getting called out, but it doesn't matter, it's a crisis. I think that's not going to be a core issue. This is going to be what technology has been needed the most. And I got to ask you, Stu, when was the last time you and I talked about virtual desktops? Because <laughs> hey, if you're working at home and you're not at your desk, you need, might need some stuff on your desk. This is a real issue. I mean, it's, an, it's yeah. kind of a corner case in tech, but virtual desktops, if you're not at the office, you need to have that at home. This is a huge issue, and it's been a surge well, in demand. Yeah, th th there were jokes in the community that, you know, finally it's the year of VDI, but desktop as a service, John, is an area that took a little while to get going. So, you know, Dave Vellante and I were just having a conversation about this. You and Dave interviewed me when Amazon released Workspaces, and it was like, ah, you know, Citrix is doing so well, and VDI, uh, you know, isn't the hotness anymore, but desktop as a service has grown. If you talk about desktop as a service compared to VDI, VDI is still, uh, you know, a bit of a heavy lift. Even if you've got, you know, hyper-converged infrastructure, you can roll this out, it's a couple of months to put these whole solutions together. Now, if you have some of that infrastructure, can you scale it? Can you build them up much faster? Yes, you can. But if you're starting uh, to enable your workforce a little bit faster, desktop as a service is going to be faster. AWS has a strong solution with workspaces. Uh, it really is that enablement, and it's also uh, it, it putting pressure on the SaaS providers. One, they need to scale, and two, they need to be responsive that some of their customers need to scale up really fast, and some of them need to dial things down. You know, always worry about you know, some of these contracts that the SaaS providers put you in, so you know, customers need to make sure they're, they're being loud and clear with their providers. Uh, if you need help, if you need to adjust something, you know, push back on them because they should be responsive because we know that there is a broad impact on this, but it will not be a permanent impact. So, yeah. you know, these are the times that companies need to work closely with customers because otherwise you will, you will either make a customer for life or you will have somebody that will not be saying good about you for a long time. Well, Stu, let's just quickly run through some of the highlights so far on the virtual uh, conference, virtual event. Obviously Amazon pre-announced last month the Windows migration service, which has been a big part of their business. They've do, been doing it for about 11 years, so we're going to have an interview with an AWS person to talk about that. Yeah. Also, AppFlow is announced as well. That's part of the, the virtual kind of private, you know, private connects. So, you know, you're seeing that right here, large scale uh, data lakes, breaking down those silos, moving data from the cloud, from the console, into the top applicants like Salesforce is the big one. So that was kind of pre-announced. The big story here is the Kendra availability and the augmented AI availability, among other things. This is this big story. This kind of shows the Amazon track record. They pre-announce it, reinvent, and try to run as fast as they can to get it shipping. The focus of AI, the focus of large scale capacity, whether it's building on top of EC2, serverless, Lambda, AI, all this is kind of coming together. Data, high capacity operational throughput, and added value. This seems to be the highlights, your reaction. Yeah, so John, you know, AppFlow is an interesting one. We were just talking about the SaaS providers. Uh, an area that we've been spending a lot of time talking with the ecosystem is, you know, my data is all over the place. You know, yes, there's my data centers in the public cloud, but there's all of these SaaS providers. So, 
Uh, you know, if I have data in ServiceNow, I have it in Workday, I have it in Salesforce, you know, how do I have connectors there? How do I secure that? How do I protect that? So Amazon, you know, working with a broad ecosystem and helping to pull that together uh, is definitely an interesting one to watch. Uh, you know, Kendra definitely been some good buzz in the ecosystem for a while there. Um, you know, the question is on, you know, natural language processing and AI, you know, where are the customers with these deployments? Um, because some of them, if they're a little bit more long-term strategic, might be the kind of projects that get put on pause rather than the ones that are critical for me to run the business today. And I just did a podcast with the VMware ecosystem last week, talking about which projects will be funded, which ones won't. It brings up this new virtual work environment where you know some people are going to get paid and some people aren't. If you're not core to the enterprise, you're probably not going to get paid. If you're not getting a phone call to come into work, you're probably going to get fired. So there will be projects that will be cut and projects that will be funded. Certainly virtual events, which I want to talk to you about in a minute, um, to applications that are driving uh, revenue and or engagement around the new workforce. So the virtualization of business is happening. Now, we joke because we know server virtualization actually enabled the cloud, right? So I think there's going to be a huge Cambrian explosion of applications. So I want to get your thoughts the folks you've been talking to the past few months, what are you hearing in terms of those kinds of projects that people are going to be leaning into and funding versus ones they might put on hold? Have you heard anything? Yeah, well, you know, John, it's interesting. When you go back at its core, what is AWS? And they want to enable build. So, uh, you know, the last couple of years we've been talking about all of the new applications that will get built. That's not getting put on hold, John. You know, it, it's what I do, not just to run the business, but grow the business. I need to still have applications at the core of what we do. Data and applications really are what driving companies today. So that piece is still critically important. Um, and therefore, AWS is a you know very strategic partner there. Yeah, I, I'm seeing the same things too. I think the common trend that I would just add to that would be, I'm seeing companies looking at the COVID crisis as an opportunity, and frankly, in some cases, an excuse to lay people off. And that's kind of, you're seeing some of that. But at the end of the day, that people are resetting reinventing and then putting new growth strategies together. That still doesn't change. Business still needs to get done, so great point. All right, Stu, virtual events. We're here with the AWS Summit. Normally we're on the show floor with theCUBE. We're here with the virtual cube, doing our virtual thing. It's been interesting, Stu. A lot of our events are con have converted to uh, virtual. Some have been canceled, but most of them have been, been running on the virtual. We've been plugged in, but theCUBE is evolving. And I want to get your thoughts on how you see the cube evolving. I've been getting a lot of questions. This came again on the VMware community podcast. How has the cube morphed? And I know that we've been working hard with a lot of our customers. How have we evolved? Because we're in the middle of this digital wave, this, this virtualization wave. The cube is in there. We've been successful. There's been different use cases. Some have been embedded into the software. Amazon's got their own run of show. But events are more than just running the show content. It's a yeah, lot more, so, so John, more community behind us too. Your thoughts on how the well, cube has evolved and what are you seeing? I, I, I'm glad, John, you just mentioned community. So, you, you know, you and I have talked many times on air and just the two of us, you know, the cube is as much a network and a community as it is a media company. So, you know, first of all, it, it's been so heartening over the last couple of months that as we've been putting out content, we're still getting some great feedback from the community. One of the things I personally miss is you know, when we step off the stage and you walk the hallway and you bump into people that know and they, they ask you questions or, you know, they share some of the things that they're going through, that data that we always look for is something we still need. So I'm making sure to, you know, reach out to friends, you know, diving back into the social channels uh, to make sure that we, you know, understand the pulse of what's going on. But, you know, John, you know, our community has always been online. So a big piece of the cube is relatively unchanged other than we're doing all of the interviews remote. We have to deal with everyone's home systems and home network. Every once in a while you hear a dog bark barking in the background or you know, a child running, but it, it actually humanizes them. So it, there's that opportunity for the communities to rally together. Some of the, my favorite interviews have been you know, the open source communities that are gathering together uh, to work on common issues, a lot of them specifically for the global pandemic. Uh, you know, and so there are some really good stories out there uh, I worry when you talk about you know companies that are saying, hey, this is the opportunity for us. Uh, yeah. There have been so many job losses uh, in this pandemic that it, it just is, is heartbreaking. So, you know, we, we love when the tech community is helping to you know spur new opportunities, create new industries, 
Uh, I had a great uh, interview that I did with uh, our, our friends from A Cloud Guru, uh, and they've seen about a 20 to 30 percent increase on people taking the online training. And one of the main things uh, that they're tra taking training on is the you know 101 courses on AWS, on Google, and on Azure, as well as an interesting point, John. They said multi-cloud is something that's come up. So you know, 2020, we've been wondering: is AWS going to admit that multi-cloud is a thing? Um, or are they going to stick with their hybrid message and you know ask well, that their partners not talk about multi cloud? It's been interesting on the virtual queue because we and Amazon's been a visionary in this and letting the queue be virtual with them. It's become a connective tissue stew between the community. And if you think about how much money the companies are saving by not running the physical events and with the layoffs, as you mentioned, I think there could be an opportunity for the queue to be that connective tissue to bring people together. And I think that's the mission that we hope will unfold. But ultimately, digital investments will probably go up from this. I'm seeing a lot of great conversion around, okay, saw the content, what does it mean to me? Is it my, my friend group? How, are my friends involved? How do I learn? How do I discover? How do I connect? And I think the interesting thing about theCUBE is we've seen that up front. And I think there's a positive sign ahead, Stu, around virtualization of the media and the community. And I think it's going to be an economic opportunity. And I hope that we could help people find either jobs or ways to re-engage and reconnect. So again, reInvent's coming, you got VMworld, all these big shows too, they drop so much cash. Can you imagine if they put all that cash into the community? I think that's a viable scenario. Yeah, no, absolutely, John. There, there is, you know, big money in events, you know, yes, there are less costs. There also, you know, almost none of them are charging for people to attend and very few of them are, are charging their sponsors. So, you know, big shift in, in how we have to look at these. It needs to be a real focus on content. I mean, from our standpoint, John, from day one, and you know, we've been doing this a decade now, in the early days when it was a wing and a prayer on the technology, it was always about yeah. the, the content and the best people help extract that signal from the noise. So, yeah. you know, some things have changed. The mission overall stays the same. And you know what, Amazon is being humble. They're saying, we're figuring it out. Of course, we're psyched that we're there with the virtual cube. Stu, thanks for spending the time kicking off this virtual coverage wrap up. Not as good as face to face, love to be there on site, um, but I think it's going to be easier to get guests too, Stu, in the virtual world, but we're going to go to a hybrid as soon as it comes back to normal. Sounds like cloud Stu, public, hybrid, virtual. There it is. Stu, thanks so much. Okay, that's the thanks, cube John. coverage for AWS Summit Virtual Online. This is theCUBE virtual coverage. I'm Sean for Stu Miniman. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next segment.